Welcome dear creatives. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a crinoline fascinator. I have this crinoline here and the size is 47 by 3 inches. And then this other big size crinoline that has pattern. The size is 72 inches by 7 inches. Okay. So now I want you, I'll also be needing these feathers here that you can see of course. And then, of course, my needle and thread and my Alice band. So, but just watch how I'm going to start forming this crinoline. Now, I already have um, the ends of my crinoline tied, which, of course, I'm going to apply some glue um, at the end of the day. So, you know why we tie our crinoline now? So that it does not frill. So, just watch how I'm going to start making this beautiful fascinator now please if you have not subscribed to my channel please do so also remember to turn on the notification bell so you will not miss out on any of my weekly diy videos okay feel free to also share this video so that it will reach more people okay so now just watch and as you watch remember to practicalize so I folded it into two equal halves first, then I bent it this way. Now feel free to take a measurement of yours, like the very first bending that you do, the way I bent this one, okay? So that you would know the next measurement to take. But for me, I already know how to, I already know I'm going to get the right measurement without even taking a proper measurement with my tip of my crinoline okay because just watch you see how i'm going to get the next size that will be exactly the same size or the same measurements as this very first crinoline that i bent so now after bending it you now start stitching when you stitch you use your thread to go over it just watch just watch how i'm doing it i'm stitching and then i'll go over it you know to make it firm like very firm now if you cannot do it the way i did it if you're a beginner you cannot just keep um, adding folds the way I did, which, or the way I'm going to do rather, just like I started now. Okay, see the next fold I'm going to add. Now, if you cannot do it this way, if it's going to be difficult for you, feel free to take them one after the other, like cut it out after folding, stitch, tie, cut another one, then later you join them together, okay? observe that as I fold my crinoline and I go through it with my thread I go through the very next one and the very next um, one till I get to the very first fold of my crinoline I don't even understand and then when I'm rolling with my thread when I'm going over it going over the crinoline with my thread I go over all the folds of the crinoline so now this small part of the crinoline that is remaining, watch closely how I'm going to fold it. Then I'll still pass my thread through each of the crinoline folds. Do you understand? I'll pass it through each of the crinoline folds till I get to the very first one. So that I'll have a very firm crinoline. <laughs> So now that I'm done making this particular crinoline design, I'm going to set it aside and use the smaller size of my crinoline to form a similar design. But this time around, I won't fold into two equal halves. I'll just bend it this way, as you can see me doing. And like I said, you can feel free to take a measurement of your crinoline. But 
I'm sure I'm going to get it right. I'm going to get my measurement right without using my tape. So now I'm going to start stitching. I'll stitch and then I'm going to roll, like turn my um, thread over, take it over the crinoline. You see, just this way to, you know, make it firmer. And then I'm going to make another fold. Like I said, when I was using the big size crinoline, you can decide to, if you're a beginner, you would find it difficult to do it this way. You can fold it separately, tie, stitch, cut, do it again. Later, you start arranging them this way, one after the other. Do you understand? So just keep watching and learning. Remember to practicalize. <laughs> by worth i desire your worst so you can just hide while i work i ain't tired you first i'll write a second third verse about the lies you go disperse you never did sh i know it hurts but something deep inside won't let me quit i swear that i'm inspired by all this tell me that i can't and i won't that's what guides me the most your lies i'll do what i want So the next thing I'm going to do now is to join the two crinoline designs together. Watch how I'm going to achieve that. I'll join the two crinoline designs together. I'll use my needle and thread to attach them together and make sure they are firm. So just keep watching and learning. Remember to practicalize. <laughs>
satisfied by worth I desire your worst, so you can just hide while I work I ain't tired, you first I write a second, third verse About the lies you go disperse You never did sh- I know it hurts But something deep inside won't let me quit I swear that I'm inspired by all this sh- Tell me that I can't and I won't That's what guides me the most You lies, I'll do what I want So the next thing I'm going to do now is to attach my Alice band onto my crinoline fascinator. I'm sure you know how to do that if you are into making of fascinators. But if you do not know how to do that, just watch carefully how I would attach it. I'll make sure I sew my crinoline fascinator onto my Alice band using my needle and thread and make sure it is very firm. Okay. <laughs> by worth i desire your worst so you can just hide while i work i ain't tired you first i write a second third verse about the lies you go disperse you never did sh- i know it hurts but something deep inside won't let me quit i swear that i'm inspired by all this sh- tell me that i can't and i won't that's what guides me the most you lies i'll do what i want <laughs> Some call what I'm holding in my hand gum stay, you know, but normally it's called it a lining. You can just cut out any piece that you know would cover up the part of your crinoline fascinator that you attached your Alice band to. Okay, the part that has the thread. So you cut it out, apply some glue, either UHU glue or your hot glue, and then you use it to cover up that place so that it will be neat. Okay. So that was what I eventually did, even though I didn't capture it in this video, but at least I've showed you. <laughs> then I'm going to just try and adjust my feathers. You can bend the feathers. You can also use part of your feathers to cover up any part that you feel should be covered. For instance, towards the center, I would love to cover some feathers and just attach there, 
you know, just curve it, bend it the way I just did now. It will give you another pattern. You can just use your glue and apply there and use the feathers on that part. It will come out very beautiful and perfect. Thank you for watching.